Hi biologists, let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this section and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to give a general outline of the diversity of living organisms and the features and behaviours that make them living. Define metabolism and the continuity of life and be also able to define life. What does this actually mean? What are we trying to understand? Well, it's simple enough. You have to be able to give a general outline or describe the diversity or variety of living things. You also have to be able to discuss the characteristics or the features that actually make them living. We have to define the terms metabolism, continuity of life and define life itself. Let's go. To be honest I do not approach this section until we reach the end of the course so that we can tie it all together by remembering stuff and concepts that we've already learned. However if you approach this at the start and in fairness it is at the beginning of the biology syllabus you'll be fine. It's just that you might have a lot more new terms and concepts to deal with. In searching for a definition of life, we have to understand that there is a diversity of life. Diversity refers to a range or a variety of different things. Remember the dance group Diversity? They had a range of different ages. We have to understand that there is a diversity of life, that we are surrounded by a wide variety of living things. You might remember the five kingdoms. We had Kingdom Monera, we had Kingdom Protista, Kingdom Plantae, Kingdom Fungi and Kingdom Aluminia or animals. And we basically went down through these five kingdoms and discussed the characteristics of each kingdom. You might recall the characteristic of Monera was that they were prokaryotic. They did not have membrane-bound nucleus or a membrane-bound organelle. Protista were put into this group because they were excluded from all other kingdoms. The main characteristic of plantae is that the plants were able to carry out photosynthesis. Fungi are saprophytes, they had cell walls made of chitin, and the animals were the only kingdom with a nervous system. When we look at this diversity of life, what do they all have in common? Remember, the objective here is to come up with a definition of life. Well, these organisms share common features or behaviours or characteristics that allow us to identify them as living things. What do they all share? Well, they all need food, which we shall call nutrition. They're all made of cells. Cells are organised into tissues and organs and eventually into a body. That's called organisation. They react to stimuli to things in their environment, both externally and internally. This is called sensitivity or response or behaviour. I prefer to call it sensitivity. The reason will become clear in a moment. All these organisms produced wastes. Wastes made as a result of chemical reactions. This is called excretion. Not to be confused with the fact that they might produce number twos. That's called egestion. So these wastes are things like water vapor, water, salts, urea. And not forgetting carbon dioxide, of course. All these organisms reproduce. So now we have a list of five characteristics. Nutrition, organization, sensitivity, excretion and reproduction. Noser from now on. The five characteristics of life. Noser. Now some of you might be wondering 
if, especially if you studied junior cert science, we did learn back there that there were seven characteristics of life and on our list was movement and growth. So you now might be wondering where these disappeared to. Why are we now saying in Leaving Cert that there are only five characteristics of life? Well, movement and growth is subsumed or goes in under organization. So they haven't actually disappeared as such. They're given a new title. What other features do all these living things have in common? Well, they all carry out chemical reactions or metabolism. Metabolism is the sum or all the chemical reactions that go on in an organism. Metabolism is a definition that we have to learn. Remember, there are two types of metabolism. These were anabolic reactions, anabolism, or catabolic reactions, or catabolism. Anabolic reactions was where simple chemicals are changed into complicated or complex chemicals using enzymes and using energy. I like to think of anabolism as USA using enzymes, using energy. S, taking simple chemicals, making them into complicated ones. That's anabolism, USA. Examples of anabolic reactions were photosynthesis, because we are taking simple chemicals, the ingredients, carbon dioxide and water, and changing them into a complicated chemical called glucose using enzymes and using the energy of the sun. So you can see how it is a case in point for the definition of anabolism. Another example of anabolic reactions is taking amino acids, simple subunits of protein, to make muscle protein. You might have heard of anabolic steroids taken to build muscle. Another anabolic reaction is taking simple units of glucose to make the more complicated polysaccharide called cellulose. Catabolic reactions, very similar definition containing similar key points. Catabolic reactions, catabolism, is where complicated complex chemicals, C and C, not Chanel, C and C, Catabolic reactions, complicated chemicals, are changed into simple chemicals, again using enzymes, but this time releasing energy. Examples of catabolic reactions are respiration, where glucose is broken down to release energy, release energy from food, and you are making the simple chemicals carbon dioxide and water. So you can see clearly how respiration illustrates a catabolic reaction. Digestion of food, the same idea, breaking down complicated biomolecules into simple subunits like glucose units, fatty acids and glycerol, or amino acids. And decay of dead plants and animals is another catabolic reaction. So we might think of crap. We won't say that too loud though. C for catabolic reactions. Example, respiration. A for anabolic reactions or anabolism. And P for photosynthesis. Shh, crap. What else do these living things have in common? Well, when we look at them all, living things can only originate from other living things of the same type. This is continuity of life. The definition is that living things arise from other living things of the same type. Continuity of life is another definition that we have to learn. In the past, they thought that living things came out of inanimate objects. When they saw frogs coming out of mud, they decided that mud changed into frogs. 
When they saw maggots hatching out of meat, they decided that meat turned into maggots. They did not realize that the frogs had hibernated for the winter. They did not realize that flies had laid eggs in the meat. Living things can only come out of other living things of the same type. So in a nutshell, what is the definition of life? Well, let's put it together. We already realize or understand that the characteristics of life shown by all living things are noser, nutrition, organization, sensitivity, excretion, and reproduction. Nutrition, organization, sensitivity, and excretion work together towards metabolism, whereas nutrition, organization, sensitivity, and reproduction work towards continuity. In order to have metabolism or chemical reactions take place in the body, you will have to take in raw materials in the form of nutrition. Your body has to be organized into cells and tissues in order to carry out the chemical reactions. You have to react to the internal environment and there will be wastes produced as a result of the chemical reactions, so hence excretion is going to play a part. With regard to continuity of life, you will have to have nutrition and be well fed in order to be able to reproduce. Your tissues and cells have to be organized for that purpose. There has to be sensitivity to internal environments in particular, because reproduction involves hormones. And lastly, there is the actual act of reproduction and producing a new organism. So when you look at metabolism and add it to continuity, taking the two concepts together, then that will equal life. So lastly, to come up with a definition of life and define it, well, life consists of having all of a series of five characteristics. Nutrition, organization, sensitivity, excretion and reproduction, interacting towards metabolism and continuity. This definition is vital and is the objective of this whole section. We want to search for a definition of life. So as an add-on to the end, life involves an interaction of processes towards metabolism and continuity. But we'll just mention that coming up with a definition of life has caused a lot of disagreement amongst the scientists and there is no completely satisfactory or universally acceptable definition of life. Now that we have arrived at the end of our lesson, are you able to give a general outline of the diversity of living organisms? Are you able to outline the features and behaviours that make them living? Can you define metabolism and continuity of life? Can you define life?